All right. Well, welcome to this episode of Clinically Pressed. Uh, this is a continuation of our interviews with our board of directors as we have made the switch to nonprofit. We are here with Deb Sasma, um, who has gone. Through, we were just talking off air about all kinds of different things, but has a ton of background in coaching. Uh, then went in and was running a physical education program at UWL and now has recently returned to coaching. Uh, so all kinds of unique insight and connections and valuable tools that we're looking forward to having as part of the board. Uh, but just like with everybody else, we're here just kind of talk about it. But before um, we get too far into it, just wanted to turn it over to you to fill in a little bit more of your background um, and everything that you've done. and. And we'll jump into some of the questions. Sure. I uh, went to high school across on the east side of the state, 32 miles from Lambeau in Shano. And uh, from there, I went out to the University of Wyoming on a track scholarship and uh, did my undergraduate degree in health and physical education there. And then master's, stayed on and with uh, a red shirt year and did my master's. Nice. Yep. And then um, from there, went back to teaching high school, uh, health and PE at Wittenberg Burnhamwood High School. Then uh, Shano built a brand new high school, added a couple positions, um, got in there. So when I went back to teaching, I was coaching volleyball, basketball, track, um, both schools, and then uh, ultimately just missed collegiate athletics. Sure. And um, went from there. I um, was the, at the high school for three and three quarters years, basically, three and a half years, and then uh, went to Defiance College in Ohio okay. and did, uh, I taught, I was head volleyball, assistant track, assistant AD, and senior women's administrator, um, you know, little school of about a thousand, sure. uh, thousand kids, and um, was there for four years and got that, that volleyball t program turned around, and then uh, one of my best friends from grad school got the head volleyball job at Winona State and said, hey, come up and be the assistant, and I said, hey, awesome, you know, I'm Instead of 10 hours from home, I'm three. Sure. And um, did that for four years and uh, stepped out of coaching. Uh, recruiting got to be enough for me. Uh, stepped out of coaching and uh, got my doctorate in curriculum and instruction at the University of Northern Iowa. Uh, while I was teaching, uh, after went on a state, went down to Loris College yep. in Dubuque, yep. Iowa and uh, worked on my doctorate there and then they actually closed the physical education program there. So I was looking for a new position and uh, so very fortunate to uh, end up at UW Lacrosse and uh, just finished my eighth year, uh, sixth as the program director and will be stepping into assistant volleyball and um, some athletic administration in the fall. Awesome. So. As you heard, a lot of reasons we wanted you to join the board, especially you know connections to the community, um, have a kid that's involved in the community with volleyball and all the other sports. Um, I always remember seeing you around in the summer from all the different yep. camps and everything, and obviously you helping out with some camps. But uh, what made you want to join the board of Clinically Press? Um, and kind of go from there you know I just think it's a um, just from a, a personal perspective um, you know fitness and the community and being engaged it's it's so vitally important and I think the folks on this board and the mission of this program um, is just invaluable to the community and I think a lot of people think they know a lot of things um, but they always revert to how they were taught. Sure. And, and historically, as an educator, physical education, that's not the right way to do things. Sure. You know, it, and they call it the new PE, but you know, it's really, it's, it's fitness education and it's health education and, and it's lifelong learning. And, and I think that's, that's a piece here that that's what was so important to me. Um, you know, and like you mentioned, my daughter's 13 and involved in everything and, and I wanted her to see that side, that side of things, you yeah. know, and, and so that's, that was, and I thought it'd be a whole lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. We're hoping so once we get really up and rolling. Um, what unique skills, experience, knowledge, connections, anything that you want to add in there, do you bring to help with the goals of making the complicated, simple, and kind of giving back to the community? Yeah, I think that's probably because, because of my vast my range of experiences from being an athletic assistant athletic director to a 
professor to a high school teacher to a collegiate coach to a high school coach I think it's a pretty unique skill set that I've got I, I mean agree. Yeah. it's uh, there's not a lot of me's around and <laughs> um, and my age has something to do with that but you know I think the making the simple or making the complicated simple I think that's my job as an educator sure absolutely. and you know and and reading research and being able to or even doing research, you know, like we were talking before too, how can we take, if I'm gonna do something, I wanna make it applicable to people's lives, right. or kids' lives, or, you know, that's that's the educator in me. And, but also understanding what D1 Athletics is and what it looks like, and granted it was a while ago, and it's changed a lot, but, you know, that competitiveness and that drive and what that does take, yep. but also teaching a, you know, a third grader you know why is this important to you right. and I think that's that's a unique skill set that I have I would agree with you there I don't have, you know so many different things to take a look at um, from, the, from the different angles so we'll hold for a second okay. <laughs> no you're well, all you're good <laughs> we fully we're yeah, we, on we it, were so waiting we yeah. edit, editing's easy on the back end All right, thank, thank you. you. So what have you seen, or are, do you believe are the biggest barrier or barriers um, in people getting healthy, active, you know, improving their general fitness? You know, I think it, the, the, I would guess probably even research-wise, the most identified is time. I don't have time to do it. Sure. And prioritizing... Um, prioritizing that and the, and it's hard I mean you know with a 13 year old right now who is running you know camps or something every day of the week yep. and to the pool and the, you know where I want her to be be active um, that doesn't leave a lot of time for me trying to shuffle her right. and just I think being selfish which is not something people are very good at right and um, me included I mean I me included. and schedules schedules get in the way and and I think that's that to me is the biggest barrier both personally and from what I see from others is um, you know do I have the time am I willing to make the time or yep. sacrifice that time um, which really shouldn't be a sacrifice, but then I also think there's just so much information out there. What is reliable? What what can I trust? Yep. Like who can I trust? Yep. And um, you know, in working with you and, and AJ as well, that that to me is like, okay, if I'm going to do this or I want to work at this, who do I trust that I know isn't is is in it for me and not for themselves? Sure, sure. I know that was a big thing when AJ and I kind of started throwing around the idea of going nonprofit. Of like, I like thinking entrepreneurial and like salesy, but I feel really not great about the salesy part. And I like the idea of like, hey, we're selling you this stuff because 50% of it or whatever our breakdown is going to be is going to giving back to others, and the other 50% is just to keep things running and up yeah. and going. And I feel like that might bring a layer of trust in that we're not doing it to make it this mass profit and like right. that's why I like that non-profit status versus just slinging supplements or whatever it may right. be to try you know and hit my free vacation to God knows where <laughs> yeah. um, in a mid-level marketing scheme. Yeah um, well and to reinvest in the community and I think that was the other part of the reason when we first started talking about this that it was so I can see the impact that it can have and of course being an educator in K-12 schools and educating yep. physical educators who have the widest reach you know to anybody in the community yep. and you know and, and making sure that they're doing things um, in a way that's safe for kids for sure. and and that so to me that was a, a huge part of this um, to be in on the board is that the the intent is to make it better and so again back to the nonprofit I think that was a big piece for me too awesome what has been the best resource that you found for yourself and just trying to learn things and then also that you would recommend for others? 
Yeah, and I, well, and, and they could be the same, obviously. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you know, and for me, it's who I know. I mean, and I've been very, very fortunate in the in the world I live in with athletics and physical and health education to have known people and gotten to know people that I trust. Sure. You know, and and you and you know you and AJ. I mean that that for me. That's that's what's been beneficial for me in the last year, six months. Um, but that that's the best resource. I can read research. I can I can look at that. But I also know enough that I can do a lot with numbers if I want to. And right. you know, and we're all unique individuals. And so what's yep. going to work for me isn't going to work for somebody else. Absolutely. And it can't. It's not, there is no cookie cutter to this. There you know, there's principles. And things that we can give a go, but but having having someone or resources that that are, that can actually be applied to real life. I mean that 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 to me because the you know chasing the 13 year old and now going into season and being on a bus twice a week doesn't lend itself to good nutrition and right, like okay right. so now how do I how do I navigate this and who can I talk to and. And even connecting, I think, with people along the way. Yep, totally agree. Our final question is, you know, what in what you do and working with the board now, how do you make what is complicated simple? And you kind of referenced this already, but yeah, if you want to sum it up again. Please. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, and in, in you and I were even talking about some research, and in my class this morning we were too, and and taking the experience that I have and the knowledge that I'm gaining and how do I make that fit so I can so we can explain it or present it to an elementary school teacher, a middle school teacher, a yep. high school teacher, a college coach, a college athlete that doesn't have the background um, but we know that it's it's safe, it's research based, it's it works and it's going to be beneficial and and that that to me is the most important piece of it. <laughs> And totally. I think I can help with that. Just, just the education background um, and the training that I've had, and I think the experiences are a big part of that. It's a very diverse group of directors mm -hmm. that have lots of different experiences, and I may not understand what you're saying in in an AT world, for example. Right. But like, okay, so let me think about that. How would I explain that to my world? Right, which is also extremely beneficial, though so it's not too high a level. We get that way, even sitting with the doctors. Sure. Sure, I, whatever you guys say, because I didn't understand half of that. But yeah. then I can potentially even relay it better to a patient because yes. I see it from just a slightly different thing, and you get those aha moments, which um, even per your, again, off air, you talking about being willing to, like, you know, reread stuff and really good with words, like, that is so invaluable because it's not necessarily what you say. Right. It's what they hear and comprehend and understand and get those aha moments yeah. um, is so important. So, yeah, well said. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And it's not an easy thing to do because um, everybody hears it, perceives it differently. Absolutely. So we can say, <laughs> it's like any good coach, you know, I want other coaches to step in the gym or somebody else to say something. They're saying the same thing, but the kids are hearing it differently. Right. And then it makes sense. Yep. Perfect. So I'm just going to keep talking. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, we appreciate you being on the board and looking forward to things to come. And we'll definitely have to do a follow-up kind of after we get going with this and after your first full year of coaching. So. Yeah, it'll, it, this is awesome. It's great work by you guys, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Appreciate that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>